Eyewitness News starts right now. First tonight, we have an exclusive investigation you will only see here on Eyewitness News into how your tax money is being spent by the West Virginia State Supreme Court. Over the past several years, the High Court has been undergoing extensive renovation inside all of the offices. Eyewitness News investigative reporter Kenny Bass uncovered spending during that renovation that is raising serious questions about how tax money is being handled. It all started with this $32,000 couch. Yes, you heard that right. The price many people pay for a nice car spent on one couch for one justice's office. Kenny is live tonight at the state capitol. And Kenny, you found the elaborate purchases really just begin with that couch. You are correct, Kelly. That couch is really the tip of the spending iceberg. We've combed through thousands of documents to try and see just how the West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals was spending its money. From a half million dollar renovation of Justice Robin Davis's chambers to the $111,000 upgrade to Justice Margaret Workman's office, the court purchased several items to enhance its space, and we wanted to let you know what those items were and how much they cost. The West Virginia Supreme Court is a secretive place. In fact, this is the first time anyone here can remember that TV cameras were allowed into the inner sanctum, the private offices of the five justices. Since 2009, there has been a lot of renovation work going on here. The original estimate for the upgrades was about $900,000. That has since ballooned to more than $3.7 million. When we looked closer, we found some things we think you should know about. We start with Chief Justice Alan Lawfrey's chambers. He joined the court in 2013, and work on his office got underway fairly quickly. The total cost for the project was just over $363,000, but that included some major expenditures for office furniture, namely this sectional sofa with a price tag of nearly $32,000, complete with $1,700 in throw pillows. Why is there a couch that costs more than $30,000 in your chambers? Kenny, it's absolutely outrageous that the prior administrative director would spend that much money on a couch with state money. I think it's outrageous and I think it's shameful. Other furniture bills for law free space include $16,000 for eight office chairs, a $2,500 coffee table, and $6,400 for window cornices and blinds. And then there is the most unique part of Justice Lawfrey's chambers, a custom-made wooden medallion built into the floor, with each county cut from a different colored piece of wood, and Justice Lawfrey's home county of Tucker in blue granite. This cost taxpayers $7,500, about a quarter of the total cost of the floor. How much input did you have in the renovations and the furnishing of your office? Well, very little. I mean, when I came into office, uh, this, the renovations were a part of six and a half years of renovations, the first, third, and fourth floors. Uh, more than 96% of those renovations were completed by the time it came to my office. He absolutely had to have his map on the floor. We tried to take care of what he requested, but ultimately it was his decision. Ultimately it was his expenditure. Ultimately he's the boss. Steve Canterbury is the former administrative director for the court. He was in charge of the day-to-day -day business of the Supreme Court for 11 years, and Lawfrey puts the blame for the spending on him. Yeah. Mr. Canterbury put things together and came and asked uh, for a, a, approval of uh, maybe do you like this desk or do you like this collar or something like that? I remember him saying some of the effect of, well, if anybody gets upset, I'll just blame it on you. You're the administrator. And I, I laughed at that, of course, good joke. And, uh, but now the joke's on me, I guess. So to be clear, you did not select that couch and you did not mandate the 20 some thousand dollars in fabric changes for that couch? Absolutely outrageous. The answer is no. Justice Robin Davis is the senior justice on the court. The renovation of her office was the most expensive of all of the chambers at a half million dollars. Most of that, 433000 went to construction costs. However, the modern look of Davis's office required extensive stainless steel, glass, and woodwork, which vastly increased the bottom line. I wanted the people of West Virginia to hear about my office from me. You know, anything that is done in this office is 
on me. Davis's biggest taxpayer funded furniture expenditures include an $8,000 office chair. Is that a lot for a chair? Well, it's probably a lot for a chair, but I have um, arthritis in my spine and it allows me to sit here for hours on end. And I chose the chair. And two floor rugs totaling $28,000. That is an Edward Fields rug. It is a high quality rug and it will last the taxpayers of the state of West Virginia for another 50 years. Justice Davis now owns many of her office furnishings, including a sofa, her desk, a coffee table, and chairs. She wrote the state a check for $10,000 in October to cover the purchases which were made in 2013. Everything that you see in this, my private office, is owned by me with the exception of the carpet that you're sitting on and that table and those two plastic chairs. Okay, so the art, every other piece of furniture in my office is owned by me. None of the other three justices agreed to on-camera interviews. Justice Margaret Workman's chamber renovations were the least expensive of the five, costing $111,000. Like Justice Davis, she owns most of her office's furnishings. However, she did purchase a nearly $9,000 sofa, which was paid for with state money. Justice Menace Ketchum says he wanted a traditional old-time lawyer look for his chambers. Court records show renovations here cost $193,000. Receipts show that major expenses for his office, outside of infrastructure, were $6,600 for renovation of his secretary's desk, along with more than $11,000 for carpet, reupholstering, and window treatments. Earlier this year, work done on Justice Beth Walker's chambers totaled $130,000. The majority of that money went to cabinetry, countertops, fixtures, and flooring. However, those chambers had been extensively renovated just seven years earlier for former Justice Brent Benjamin at a price tag of 264 grand. When you combine the bills for both projects, the cost goes up to nearly $395,000. With so much money being spent by the court, where was the oversight? I believe prior justices had a trust in Mr. Canterbury. Justice Lawfrey led the efforts 10 months ago to have Canterbury fired. When I became the Chief Justice in uh, January of this year, I started an investigation of uh, Mr. Canterbury and the actions of his prior administration. And some of the things that I've discovered have been very troubling. Uh, so troubling, in fact, that I have personally contacted the United States Attorney's Office. <laughs> well, he was my boss, and you really can't tell a boss no. You can explain that this might be busting the budget, but if he says do it, uh, then I signed off on it. Mr. Canterbury is a disgruntled, fired employee. He threatened court members on the way out the door. He's trying to set this up to uh, damage the court, damage individual members of the court for some future lawsuit. We don't know of any lawsuits, but not all of the justices are critical of Canterbury. Well, I think in the grand scheme of things, Steve did a, I think he did a very good job. I had a good working relationship with Steve. He was very professional. Um, the guy worked 24-7. You know, I... Um, voted not to fire Steve, and I think that's public knowledge, but the, you know, the, the, the decision was made and we move on. We have an excellent administrative director now in Gary Johnson, uh, and we're putting the procedures and protocols in place that quite frankly should have been here during the last decade. When we're finished with this, you're gonna see this branch being the most transparent uh, branch in the state of West Virginia. West Virginia is the only state in the union where the court has complete control over its uh, budgetary appropriation. Meaning each year the court submits a funding request to the legislature, gets the money, and then spends it as the court sees fit. How do you fix that? 
Well, it's a constitutional amendment. Educate people, get them to vote for uh, the legislature controlling the money. Justice Lawfrey says the court is fixing itself. We're making incredible changes. The majority of the court is on board with everything that's happening. Uh, it is night and day from where we were in January. I was in this business, I hope, for the right reasons, to do right things. And it, of course, it pisses me off that I, uh, that I was fired. But you know, these are just facts. And I had opinions, but I kept most of those opinions to myself. The wonderful thing about retirement is that I actually can express an opinion now. As we said, Justices Workman, Ketchum, and Walker all declined to speak with us on camera about the spending. They did provide us with statements that we'll be putting up on our website shortly on WCHSTV.com. We'll also be putting up some receipts for those items that were purchased, including that very expensive sectional sofa. Tomorrow night on Eyewitness News, we'll be taking another look at the court spending. This time, we're going to venture outside of the Justices' chambers to other areas where money was spent, including a third floor private bathroom that was very pricey. Spoiler alert, it's close to 100 grand. We're also be taking a look at the first floor walkway to the administrative offices that took a lot of money and um, other items that you may be surprised to hear about. We're also going to be talking with lawmakers here in Charleston and Governor Justice and get their reaction to how the Supreme Court is spending taxpayer money and if there needs to be some supervision of how the judicial branch spends its funds. That's all coming up tomorrow on Eyewitness News. For now, reporting live in Charleston at the state capitol, Kenny Bass, Eyewitness News.